this opportunity, and I want to talk to you tonight about why we need the whole armor of God and what the whole armor of God entails and what it's about. Uh, we're living in a day and age that is comparable to the days of Noah. It's only by grace that our world has not been destroyed yet. God's word, which was foundational in establishing our legal system in America, is being challenged and attacked in all aspects of society. We're seeing wars around us uh, popping up all the time, the Israel conflict and the Ukrainian conflict and other conflicts, but there's a more important battle that's going on right now, and that's a spiritual battle that we fight. So I want to talk to you tonight about why we need the whole armor of God and what each part represents and uh, why each part's important, just like uh, the church has many members and uh, we're one body, but we have many members. The same way with the armor. Each part has its own uh, responsibility as we, we as Christians have our own responsibility as members of, uh, of the church. But if we expect to survive, we need to put on the whole armor of God uh, to protect us in the warfare that we face so that we'll be able to stand in the evil day. Uh, let's look, uh, if you would, turn to your Bibles, Ephesians 6, uh, 10 uh, through 18. And if you want to stand, you can. And we'll see what the armor is and how it protects us during the warfare we face. The warfare of uh, the spirit-filled believers, the warrior's power, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. As warriors of God, we have the power by being strong in the Lord and trusting in the power of his might. We have to put our trust and our faith in him. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's the whole purpose of the armor is to be able to stand against the devil and the evil one because uh, he's uh, not something that we can take on on our own. And we can only take warfare on him through Christ as the one that gives us the power in the Holy Spirit uh, to be able to defeat him and the things that he uh, comes with against us. And then uh, we look at the warrior's foes. And uh, the foes are not flesh and blood, but they're principalities. And you can break down that principalities into princes of palities. Each, uh, the, the, the demonic reign, they have a lot of different areas throughout the... Are you going to preach or are you going to read the text? I'm, I'm doing both. I'm, I'm, fixing, no, I'm, I'm fixing to get into the text. No, you need to read the text. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, I think you might want to do that no, instead no, of sit. Read but, the text. Okay. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness Amen. of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. The war warrior's resource is praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You may be seated. Okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, our, our foes, like I said, aren't uh, this world. Our foes uh, are the realm of Satan, and that uh, consists of principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this world, and against the spiritual weakness in high places. It's just like in the uh, Old Testament, you find that uh, when the kings and stuff were uh, the good kings were trying to do what God wanted to do, that they would uh, tear down a lot of the idols and everything, but they always uh, got to the high places, and when they got to the high places, they got defeated because they never took down the high places. And uh, so let's, let's look at the armor in each part of it and see what each part uh, is. And the first part that they mentioned there is... Uh, uh, just a minute. The first part of the mission is verse 14. It says, having your loins girt about with truth. And uh, to have our loins girt about with truth, the loins is where our strength's at. And uh, the belt of truth is our strength. We need to stand up for what the truth is and be firm. We need to be ready for service. God wants us to serve him, not to be sitting in pews, but to, to be a, a, a witness to him and a servant to him. As believers, we are the only ones with God's truth. 
not, the world don't have God's truth. But as believers, we do. And that truth's through the King James Bible. It's not through other translations and other uh, things that are out there, but it's through, through the King James Bible. And uh, God's truth defeats Satan's lies and protects our will to do what is right. So that's the first piece of armor that's mentioned there. And then we go on to the next piece. And the next piece is having on the breastplate of righteousness. We also need to put on this, this piece of armor, and it's what protects our heart. And uh, when uh, Satan attacks our hearts, he's attacking our emotions, our self-worth, our trust, and he likes to accuse us of being guilty and unworthy. It's a reminder we are forgiven uh, and accepted by our faith. That the, breast, the breastplate protects all our vital organs and the things that keep us alive. So that breastplate is a very important piece uh, of our spiritual armor. And then... Uh, we go on uh, then about the feet that are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, we need to be available and ready to spread the God's word. Uh, the world, a lot of them don't even know uh, who Noah was or who any characters of the Bible was, and most of them have no idea of what the church actually does. There's so many denominations out there, and they're searching uh, for truth, but yet they never find it. And we have that truth, and we need to take advantage of the fact that we have that truth. And uh, we need, should be available to God, and when opportunities arise, we need to be able to spread God, the good news, because if we don't, Satan's going to try to convince us that uh, by telling others the good news is worthless and a hopeless task and a waste of time, and it's not. I mean, we don't know when we plant the seed what the results of that seed that we plant is going to be. But it is important that at least we go out and we plant that seed. Then the, the next thing we go into we here is uh, we see above all taking the shield of faith. And uh, the shield of faith is important because it's the thing that enables us to be able to quench those fear, fiery darts of wickedness that Satan's using to attack us. And uh, with insults, he, uh, Satan likes to attack us with insults with temptations, and, uh, and uh, just like he did with Jesus in the wilderness, he took him out for 40 days and 40 nights into the wilderness and tempted him in all areas that we were going to be tempted in. But the only resource that Christ used against him was the truth and the word of God. And as Christians, we need to learn to do the same thing. When he comes to us with his lies, and uh, we need to be able to come back with him, that we have our hope in Christ Jesus and refuse to uh, believe his lies, but not only refuse to believe his lies, but quote scripture back to him, but God said, because he's going to try to convince you that God said something different, just like he did Eve in the garden. And then the next, next piece that we have that we go into there, uh, we see the helmet of salvation. Well, the helmet of salvation is probably the most important part, because if we don't have salvation, we don't have God's truth to begin with. So we do, we do have to have uh, the fact that we, we have to be saved. And, but the helmet uh, protects uh, our, our mind, our will, and our emotions. It, it protects the things that cause us to function. And that helmet's very Im important. But, and uh, if you look at these things that I'm mentioning here, too, you'll see that a lot of these things were the same areas that the Roman soldiers used to protect their bodies, too. But they were protecting their bodies from physical things instead of from spiritual things. And Satan wants us to doubt our salvation, and he will. Uh, he wants us to doubt God and doubt Jesus, and uh, tell us that God's word uh, isn't exactly what we might think it is, but it might be something different. But we are sealed to the day of redemption. God promises that we don't have to worry about losing our salvation. We don't have to worry about the fact that uh, it can be taken away from us. It's something that we can be secure in. And because we can be secure in it, uh, when Satan comes at us and tries to get us to doubt our worth, we can say, but Jesus thought I was worth it because he died on the cross for my sins. Amen. And if he thought I was worth it. What everybody else thinks of, uh, comes up with doesn't really, ma doesn't really matter, doesn't really count because we're, we're his children. We're not, we're not the, uh, uh, the, the children of Satan no more. And then lastly, uh, we have the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit 
is the Word of God. Amen. And uh, it's why it's important that we spend time in prayer and Bible reading and get God's Word in our heart. There may come a day in the United States where we may not have the Word of God to rely upon as far as a physical book that we can put our hands upon. It may be taken away from us. So all we're going to have to rely upon is what we've placed in upon our heart. Amen. So if we're not reading our Bible, if we're not spending time in prayer, if we're not studying the way we should be, we're not going to have the, the weapons and the uh, ability to be able to fight against the wiles of the devil. And uh, <clears throat> But God's word is how we have victory when being tempted by trusting in the truth of God's word and defeat in Satan's lies. And after we uh, put on the whole armor of God, one of the most important things we need to do is to bathe ourselves in prayer Amen. because that's the way we commune with God. And if we're not praying, we're not spending time in prayer, not spending time uh, talking to him and uh, doing the things that he would have us to do as far as uh, communicating with him, then we're not going to have the directions and the things that we need to be able to go out into battle and be able to combat the devil. So uh, now... Knowing these things, if you take these things and you apply them to your lives and look at your bodies and just think to yourself, you know, uh, is, is my, uh, do I have the helmet of salvation? Do I have the breastplate of righteousness? Are my feet prepared to spread the gospel? Uh, the, all the things that have been mentioned here earlier, that uh, each piece has its own worth. And it's just like each Christian, each member of this church has its own worth. Amen. And each of you have a part. When you're not here, the body's not functioning right. Amen. If you go to battle without one of these pieces of armor, you're going to have a big open spot for the devil to get at you with. And you don't want to have that open spot. You need to gird yourself up and be ready for that battle that we're going to be fighting. Because as long as we're here on this earth, we're going to have to fight that battle. Amen. And that's all I have. Amen. 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 Benjamin Rude.